most original talk radio station anywhere. We are L.A. Talk Radio at latalkradio.com. You're listening to Fouché Way with Brandon Fouché right here on L.A. Talk Radio. Well, hello and welcome to the Fouché Way radio show. Live every Thursday at 1 o'clock p.m. Sponsored by a nonprofit organization called Canine Hope for Improvement Program, where we hope to improve the quality of our dogs' lives by moving towards a no-kill society. The number here is 818-602-4929. Well, here we are, another week. I'm happy to be here, and I want to let everybody know that I'm going to be putting on a seminar and it's going to be Thursday, October the 4th, from 7 to 9 p.m. at Los Angeles Trade Tech College. And for more information and to purchase tickets, you can go to www.safela.org. That's F-A-A-F-L-A dot org. Uh, the ticket donation is $30. And for our listeners, uh, until the weekend, you can get a $10 discount. So when you go to that website, you'll be a button there that you can click on and you'll get your $10 discount. I want everybody to come down. We've got tickets that are selling right now. We only have room for 100 people. And I guarantee you, you won't want to miss this. We're going to talk about and show things that you've never seen and never heard before. And we're going to help save some lives. And the money goes to helping dogs, getting them spayed, neutered, chipped, and whatever they need. We have callers that are on the line today. This is what's gotten us to where we are. And so I, for me to make that switch, has been one of the hardest things I've ever done, Brandon. I believe you. It really has. And I've, you know, I've really struggled with it. But I'm also seeing the benefits of the behavior changes already Mm -hmm. in Brody. Good. That's that's what's going to motivate you, you know. And right. You know, this is, it's very interesting because the reason why dealing with aggressive dogs is is so elusive in terms of fixing the problem is because we're dealing with hormonal issues, not only in the dog, but within us, because this is a relationship. And so when Brody behaves like this, it affects you. And and it's almost like having your child here now because you're starting to implement the things that you need to do and you see that Brody is now running to your husband for support and jumping in his lap, making you That's look right. like the bad guy. That's right. Well, that was what was happening, uh-huh. I think, for the past couple of years, but we are changing that now because... Uh-huh. You know, until we started doing this, I didn't realize how angry I was. I didn't realize how mad I am that, you know, that, that this, that Brody's responded to us the way that he has. And I know that it comes from our behavior, but I didn't realize how not okay with me, with me this is. And, you know, in some respects, it feels like it, he was pitting us against each other. And my relationship with Scott, is going to be stronger from this too. So we're really working as a team. It's kind of like we're we're both changing our dynamic with Brody and with each other, and it's been really hard. But but I'm already starting to see some of the really positive benefits of this. Okay, and your husband's being very supportive with you too, because I mean, oh my he's, gosh, yeah. He, yeah, he sees where he's gone wrong too. Yeah, you know? very much so. And I want to kind of talk about that, you know. Um, sure. This breed, Vishla, is a sight yes. dog. It's a sight dog. Yeah. And that means it's always looking into the distance for something. Right. And in the beginning phases of you interacting with your dog, bonding with your dog, playing ball and things like that, you are producing the prey drive within Brody. Yes. Chasing things, chasing balls, frisbee sticks, whatever it is, at a distance, and he's looking and running after that thing. So now, what happens when he's out on his walk? He, because he's a sight dog, he's looking into the distance, but whatever it is that he's focused on, 
he's looking at it at it terms of prey. Right. And that's where this frustration is leading to aggression. Because right. the games that you play have to do with bringing out the prey instinct in the dog. Mm-hmm. And because you're tapping into that hormone, he is now, how old is Brody at this time? He's two. Two. Per, the exact age when this starts to take place, they begin to climb like a teenager. In his teenager's years, where now he's focusing what he would be doing with the pack to his human pack, and so he has to climb. And in order right. for him to climb, he has to discipline and dominate those that will help him climb. Right. You're in line for that. And oh, so, it's, yeah, it's happening. It's happened. We're changing it, but yes. And he's biting you. Yep. I mean, tell us about that. Yeah, I think what you just said is exactly, that's exactly it. I mean, he where, has... Where is he biting you? Where is he biting you? Oh, yeah, he's been biting me up on, you know, on my on my back on my butt, on my legs, mm-hmm. anywhere he can get access to, he'll bite on my clothes and rip them. And when is he doing it? When you tell him to do something or just arbitrarily biting kind of, I mean, when is he's he... He's controlling me. When does he do he's that? He's controlling me. When does he do it? He's controlling me. What do I do or what does he do? No, when when is he doing it? Just whenever he feels? Oh, when does he do it? Mm-hmm. Probably when he wants me to do something. If he wants me to play with him, if he wants me to take him outside and play fetch with him... Whatever he wants, if he wants, if he's, what, I, what I've interpreted as bored, but I think it's just he doesn't know what he's supposed to be doing, so he's just confused. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, when he wants something from me, that's that's his communication with me. And I own you, and you'll do what I say. And he's not doing this to your husband? No. no. Interesting. Don't you find that interesting? How does that make yeah. you feel? Awful. Yeah. All Awful. right. Look, you're going to have to look at this. And look at your profession that you're in and the counseling that you do. This is no difference. This is like a child that's acting out. Okay? Mm-hmm. And, right. And when you try, because in his mind he feels that you're beneath him, when you try to control him, he disobeys you. He disciplines you. He says, no, no, you're not going to tell me what to do mm-hmm. because you obey my commands. And so when you finally step up to show your leadership, he runs to your husband for support, jumps in his lap, and this makes you feel like what? I mean, it makes me feel like Oh my gosh! There's a team against me in my home, in my own home. You know, this, this, he's acting out, and then he's, you know, shopping for answers. Right. 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 So it, it, it makes me feel kind of betrayed. Okay. Well, you have to look at this. Not by Scott, but just by Brody. Well, yeah, by Brody, sure, and it puts yeah. Scott in a position too because he has a separate relationship with Brody, and he's got a relationship totally. with you. Yeah. So on one hand, Scott likes it, and on the other hand, he knows that he shouldn't like it that much. Yeah, well, now he's learning that exactly, right. You know? So in right. this in this situation, you have to look at it just like a situation with a child and two parents. When one parent uh, disciplines, scolds the child, they cannot run to the father or mother and look for support. They have to back them up. And and that's what that's he's exactly, doing. Yes. He's backing you up now. That's exactly right. We are we're a team. We're united, and mm-hmm. you know we are showing that together. We are the, you know, the hierarchy in the family. We're at the top. Exactly. And not only that, your husband Scott, since you guys have been trying to do that, he's now realizing that he doesn't have control over Brody himself. Right. Right. <laughs> the, that's exactly right. You know? That's right. I mean, more than me, but still Brody's, you know, Brody's been at the top. Yeah. Brody's doing his thing, man. He's controlling his pack. He doesn't want to give it up. He's being nope. resistant. He's really resisting you. He's very stubborn, yeah. yes. 
you know, they believe, that's why it's important in the very beginning, when you adopt a dog or wherever you get him from, you know, in a pack, the alpha doesn't run down to the new members of the pack and give everybody kisses and hand out treats and say, mm, I'm so happy you're here. Come join our pack. This is where we live, blah, blah. All of the positive <laughs> stuff. That doesn't exist. Right. The alpha yeah. comes down. This is what he does. He or she. There's usually an alpha male and an alpha female. They come down and they say, Arr! they display their energy, their body language, the way they look at them. They verbalize. They produce submission within the dog. Right. And they're saying, do you accept me as your leader? Mm-hmm. And in the posturing, rolling over, submission, looking, it brings out the parentalness right. in the pack leaders. And right. It says, yes, I will accept you. And then they become part of the pack. And mm-hmm. and they also have to go through this ritual with the different members that are also in the pack. Right. And that's how they learn where they belong. But you right. and Scott have been the ones that are rolling on your back. Absolutely. We didn't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't feel like anyone talks about these things. We We didn't know until now and I I wish we had known yeah because I mean he believes it now yeah he truly believes it yeah you know I want you to understand that I've, I've given you about two weeks and I told you when you were in my office that this is going to be the hardest thing that you have done <laughs> I don't think you knew it's what true. I was talking about really because you guys were said, oh, I didn't no. get it. Yeah, you didn't get I it. I didn't get it, no. Mm-hmm. And now you're seeing it. Uh, this is going to change your life, but you're going to have to, if you want Brody to change, you're going to have to make a change. This is not his problem. You created this. And that yep. means that you're going to go through, just like when you see him, and I tell you the things to do, you feel so sorry for him, right? Yes. That it makes you feel so bad. Right. But that's what you have to go through in order to get to where you want to be. Yep. I believe that. You believe it. Okay, good. Because, you know, all of that crying, and I'm sure you've done it more than one day. Yep. You have to go through that. And, And listeners, when you hear this, You have to be willing to look at this from the perspective of the dog, the way nature intended dogs to process information. You know, as humans, we act as if nature didn't know how to raise its members. You know, Mm -hmm. we think that, no, 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 all we need is clickers and treats and positive reinforcement, and, and we don't need to listen to what nature says. We've domesticated dogs so long ago that now this is how you need to communicate with them. And right. look, I'm talking to the person, which is you, Jessica, and you've studied this concept of positive reinforcement and setting your kids up to succeed. And look mm-hmm. at what has happened with your dog. That's it is, exactly right. Yes, it is not the same. It does not work. Yes. I'm living proof of that, and it changes yeah and look i want to tell our listeners also uh i met brody and he really is a sweet dog he's actually doing what he thinks he's supposed to do yeah he believes that what he is doing is in accordance to what his owners want him to do Mm -hmm. and so because of that And, you know, we hear the saying that dogs want to please us. He's really thinking that he's doing what he's supposed to do, so he's resistant to change. He's trying to be resistant to change. Right. And then you see when I come around how he makes that change, and it looks like it's supposed to look. You know, and you say, wow, I want that. And it's because of the relationship that we've developed. 
He says, okay, I understand that. This is what I'm supposed to do. You're above me, and I'm going to submit. And anything you think you want to do, it's fine with me. I want to help you get there. But I, I do want you to know you're going to have to go through a little more tough love in order to make this happen. I'm doing it. Yeah, you're doing it. You know. I'm doing it. Yeah, and your husband's helping you, and that's that's very important because. That is, it's, it's, we're going to get through, I mean, we're getting through this. We are. Yeah. And, you know, I want I want to tell our listeners, too, that, you know, I've heard many times that one out of every five aggression encounters that take place that vets hear about is related to dominance. And mm-hmm. what I mean by it, a dog perceives his owner to be weak simply by stroking him when they come up and lift your hand off of your leg or lean and rub against you and you stroke them, you are telling them that you obey their commands. Right. When dogs interpret our behavior as a reaction to their behavior, it makes them feel assertive, and this can lead to dominance, which can lead to aggression. Okay? Yes, definitely. Yeah. When we try... To win our dog's affection by responding to their demands, we are creating dominance in their minds. Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, you know, we talk about love and affection because I know that's what you want to give your dog. You're always talking about, how can I love you? And, you know, it has to be done on your terms. That means when you call him to you only, You give him affection. If he comes to tell you to give him affection, then you have to change the reason that he came to be your own. So that means you've got to tell him something else to do. And then when he does it, then you call him to you and you give him affection. Right. Okay. And you can do that a hundred times a day. It doesn't matter. (laughs) I mean, I don't care. I mean, hey, you like kissing your dog? Tongue kissing? I don't care. (laughs) That's your thing. (laughs) But you got to call him to do it. You can't right. just have him come and say, hey, I'm going to just, you know, put my tongue in your mouth. No, you can't do that. Yeah. This is not how this rolls, you know. And right. that's going to help you, you know. That's going to help right. you. So, uh, you know, I'm so glad you're on. Uh, I mean, you're, you're a perfect per- person for this because there's so many people that practice and, and, and they try to raise their dogs like their kids. And it just wasn't designed that way. And this is why a lot of dogs are in the shelters. Uh, They're being destroyed. They're being killed right now because we don't step up and become what nature intended for a dog, you know, the information that dogs are intended to to process. We have that duty. I mean, we created them. They didn't ask to be here. We created them. It's up to us to get the knowledge. And then we're responsible for that knowledge. And to raise that dog. That dog cannot possibly expect for us to think like anything but a dog. But we have that ability. And all we have to be is strong. You got to love your dog and want to change him. And and this is going to help you from giving him up. Because a dog like this is easily to give up to the shelter. Very easy. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, you know, Allison, I'm, I'm really happy to talk with you. And uh, I, I know that we'll be talking later. And I just want to tell Definitely. you and your husband, keep up the good work. And uh, thank you. Just thank you so much. Take care, Brady. Brody. You're very thank welcome. Thank you so much. And, and we are seeing, we're seeing it, it, you know, making some really serious changes. So thank you. Fantastic. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Great. Well, our next guest is Lori from Downtown Dog Rescue. I'm sure that. If not all, most of our listeners know Lori and the great work that she's done with Downtown Dog Rescue and and the homeless people and helping them to uh, take care of their dogs. And I'm just honored to have her on the show today. Lori, are you there? Hello? Did we lose Lori? Just a moment. Let's see. Lori, are you there? 
Yes. Okay, hey, Brandon, great. I'm here. I was just telling the people um, about your work a little bit. You're helping homeless people and helping to take care of their dogs and all the good work you're doing. And I was just telling them I'm so happy to have you on the show. And uh, I just want to talk to you and talk about, uh, you know, we've been knowing each other for a while and what's going on with Downtown Dog Rescue and, you know, tell everybody that don't know and everyone that does know, I'm sure they'll be interested to hear it again. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, thanks first for inviting me to be on the show. Um, Our organization was founded in 1996. So that was about 16 years ago and a lot has changed and we have known each other for about seven years. So I was, to say the least, struggling for about nine years, kind of understanding that there was something more out there than just um, obedience training, which was about all that I could find. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, back in 1996, there was no dog whisper. There were no TV shows. (laughs) It was barely even in the Internet. We were still taking pictures of dogs for adoption with a Polaroid camera that, you know, you take the picture out and, you know, you hope somebody would show up at Petco. Uh-huh. So, you know, a lot a lot has certainly changed, but um, the thing right. that hasn't changed is what I know in, in my heart, what I knew back then from just starting out ho- helping homeless people who never have their dogs, usually on a leash, um, working with, you know, just packs of dogs that were running around downtown, and none of these animals were spayed and neutered. So you had males running with males, and they're intact. And um, we were talking the other day, and I was explaining, you know, how we got some of our original rescue dogs. They would be injured on the street. Or one of our people that we were caring for their dog in a homeless camp, and, you know, some of these camps might have 20 dogs living in them, and, you know, they all got along. So I'm seeing all that, and then a dog gets injured, or somebody goes to jail, or, you know, something bad happens while I'm taking the dog. Well, now the dog's fighting. And we're not talking about just like a little fight where you can just turn the water on or, um, you know, say, hey, knock it off. You Mm -hmm. know, none of that. We're talking about a fight that's so bad it lasts for five minutes. And, you know, I run a furniture factory, so a lot of my employees can, you know, definitely uh, remember those days that we would have to get five men to stop a fight that just rolled down Santa Fe in the street. So Wow. I look back, uh, yeah, I mean, I look back and I just think, I don't even know how I lived through it. And kind of like the breaking point for me was I had a really bad dog fight at my house. Uh-huh. And, you know, because we were taking in dogs and fostering dogs, and the dogs that got attacked ended up dying later of the wound. So mm. I just felt at that point, that was before I knew you, and I just thought, I have nowhere to turn. I, in fact, I even sold that house. I just couldn't even live in that house anymore. And wow, uh, ultimately, yeah. you know, trying to work with the dog that could be attacking, um, I decided to euthanize the dog. And that is the first dog that I've ever had to put down. Mm. And to this day, you know, it's just totally, I know it was a responsible thing to do. The veterinarian told me, everybody told me, you must do this, Lori. There's mm-hmm. no other hope for the dog. Wow. And then, like, a year later, I met you. Mm. Um you know, I met you in 2005, and I brought you a pit bull that, I, you know, again, everybody told me, you're insane for taking this dog. It was a homeless man's dog. Mm-hmm. And uh, he tried to, attack, right away, just straight out of the gate, tried to go at, you know, one of my dogs and uh, almost, you know, got him by the head, and we were able to stop him. But it took, like, three of us to get blue off this, this or these or Oh, my gosh. And, um, yeah. So, I mean, it, it's not like... We just sort of had a problem. We have uh-huh. a major, major problem. I mean, <laughs> we're talking about only six or seven dogs I had back then compared uh, to anywhere from 25 to 30 dogs that I have now. That's a big jump. It's a big jump that, that you know, happened with your, your help definitely over time. But mm-hmm. it's when, when I met you in 2005, and I can remember being, you know, I knew of your work and I totally trusted you, but I had no clue. Mm-hmm. I remember coming and you <laughs> said, what do you know about this dog? And I said, well, you know, I know somebody taught him obedience. He can sit. And you just looked at me and really calmly said, Lori, none of that matters. Right. Okay, just come back, you know, give me a call and, and, and then you'll come back and, and it, everything's going to be cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I just thought, <laughs> Wow. This, I went back to my office and I said, hey, 
I'm on to something. I mean, this is excellent because I really, I really believed you. I, and, um, and I'm glad that I did because yeah. I came back and you said to me at the time you were at another, another facility, but uh-huh. you said, look out the window. Who's, who's that out there? Right. And I remember seeing that dog that in a million years, I would have never put that dog with other dogs. Okay. Mm-hmm. That dog would have been isolated forever because I was scared. Right. Sure. Real fear. That's real. So, yeah, I mean, and, and that's another thing that I learned from you and I continue to learn from you is that it's okay to be fearful. My God, I mean, you mm-hmm. need to be fearful. If you're not fearful, mm-hmm. there's something wrong there's with you, problem. but you need to, but the part that, that was the problem for me is that I was constantly wondering and unpleasantly or pleasantly surprised. So you're going through life kind of like walking through a minefield. Mm -hmm. You know, am I doing this right? Am I not doing this right? And it's that uncertainty that brings out the fear and that type of fear. I mean, what you've taught me, dogs can smell that. And and you can literally create a situation that never had to take place just based on fear. Right. And, um, you know, seeing that dog with all those dogs, that gave me such a high level of confidence that it finally clicked in my brain. And I just said, no, nah, you know what? I can do this. Mm-hmm. I've had a lot of fights. It, it, you know, in my mind, in talking to my coworker, you know, Richard, who started the rescue with me, I just said, hey, it, it can't get any worse. Right? <laughs> right? It just can't. I mean, we, we've had fights where dogs, you know, are just, it's crazy, you know. So um, let's yeah, give this a try. Like, let's listen. Yeah, it's like you're taking a, a chance. You're like, let me see. Let's see how this works. But you don't have any uh, tools in place to help you. Right. Right? And Correct. And you just put them together. And, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. right away they're okay. And then you start mm-hmm. seeing mm-hmm. them kind of urinate around and walk around the yard. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. the next mm-hmm. thing you mm-hmm. know, you're trying to break it up. Yeah. You know, um, we have to understand that, you know, dogs think a little differently. And I, I remember mm-hmm. when you came and, and mm-hmm. you know, like most of the rescue organizations that I had visited, you had dogs in crates and you would rotate them mm-hmm. and remember that? And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then we talked about how to utilize those crates in right. a way that they love them, right? And they jump up in them and they want to be there. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I we remember still you, do. Yeah. I mean, I still still feed that way. I mean, it, uh-huh. was, it was like just one time you showed me at that point mm-hmm. how you fed your dogs. Right. You know, because feeding the dogs, I mean, something as simple as feeding, it's not simple to feed, you know, feed 25 dogs in the morning by myself at 530 in the morning in the dark. So, you know, you have to have a system and that's where you have basically, I mean, just changed my life. I mean, it's it's not, um, I mean, people that are listening are going to think like, oh, this lady sounds like she's brainwashed or something, but (laughs) it's, it's so much bigger than dogs. Exactly. You know, this this is understanding and being able to take your control and take your control in business and in, because again, I run a business, I have 90 employees mm-hmm. and a dog rescue and all this seven days a week. So yeah. the skills, the skill set that basically you've taught me over the years, I've taken that to other parts of my life and I, and I really feel like I'm a much stronger person for living through all those bad times, mm-hmm. but understanding why they happen, you know, and, and putting dogs together that get in a fight. I mean, literally now we'll have a fight. It's not like we never have fights. We have, we have plenty of fights, but they're not the type of fights that we used to have. They're a fight with a purpose, mm. you know, and um, dogs that will get in a fight, we'll put them back together. Sometimes we'll put them back together immediately, Exactly. you know, and, and, and before, I mean, that, that sounds, Mm-hmm. You know, like, why wouldn't you put them back together? You know, but the level of fear that I had to put dogs back together uh, was immense. In fact, it was crippling, you mm-hmm. know. And then you walk around and you just think, okay, now those two dogs have fought and those two dogs have fought. Well, I only had seven dogs. So now, really, that dog can't be with any of the dogs. You know, so now we have to walk all the dogs. And that's that's insane. Mm-hmm. So it's... Um, you know, yeah, that's what you were doing. It's a, a lot completely too. different way. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what I did, and mm-hmm. you know, and there's, it's not like it's dog abuse. There's any problem, but I can tell you how, 
I mean, anybody that's been to the kennel or that volunteers with has seen how happy the dogs are. And, you know, they're out twice a day and they're out in a pack and, you know, we don't put all the dogs together. And that's another thing I learned from you is, you know, dogs have different energy levels. And when I'm having a bad day, I mean, that was a great piece of advice. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do everything the same way every single day. You don't have to be, you know, out there. You you don't feel well. Don't don't do your normal Right. You know, whatever dogs that you put out, you know, have an abbreviated day. You know, you've got to trust your instincts. And that, that has been so helpful, again, in every part of my life. is I, We have good instincts, but we listen to too many other people, and it becomes like chitter-chatter, as I call it, and, and you can't focus. And you think you might be doing the right thing, and then you're just paralyzed with fear. And you do nothing, which is the worst thing you can do of all. Yeah. When you, when you're afraid, when you allow that fear to come in, you know I always mm-hmm. say you got to have back doors. You know, like like mm-hmm. you said, fear is a good thing because it requires that you think about well, what am I going to do if this happens, and mm-hmm. if that happens, and that's mm-hmm. the whole purpose of putting different dogs together. You know, mm-hmm. uh, based on how you feel emotionally, mm-hmm. how you feel mm-hmm. that day, because mm-hmm. you know if we believe and understand that dogs can sense certain behaviors within us that can trigger things in them, then you're not working blindly. You're saying, no, 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 you know, the way I'm feeling, I need to pay attention to that because the way he's feeling, you're going to also have to pay attention to that. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and and I looked at mm-hmm. some of the pictures that you take in with your dogs, and I see all those pit bulls in that pack mm-hmm. down there. You know, mm-hmm. and I think people mm-hmm. probably, I mean, they know that it's possible when they look at it. They, if you're standing there, they mm-hmm. gotta say, "That's unbelievable." Mm-hmm. You know, and then you've been doing it now. I remember you felt that way in the beginning too, but you've been doing it now. Oh, it's yeah. like, oh yeah, that's what we do here, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I mean it's it's second nature, but it it's not something that it just you wake up one day and you say, "Oh, I can do it because to pro- and that's another key thing, to mm-hmm. produce it. Yeah. To produce that picture, that picture just shows you a lot of dogs. Okay, it's cool, but everything that went into creating that picture, mm-hmm. which was knowing the energy level of every dog, which is what you've taught me. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything I'm saying are just, you know, things that you've taught me, so you really should be saying it because you say it better. But um, it's it's understanding the different energy levels. So knowing that you've got to get this little, basically a badass out first, because he's the one that's got to go all around the yard and investigate and do all of his nonsense and let him... Get to a point, and then you know you can let three more out. But do it a backwards, you're gonna have a fight. Right. That dog will fight, you know. But those are the like the the skills that you've taught me, and it it it's just I can't I can't say how much this is is basically changed my life for dogs. And mm-hmm. I can take dogs. We take dogs from other rescue organizations mm-hmm. to help them out. Sometimes people. We'll just get to a dog, and I've I've definitely been in that place, too, where you just don't connect with that dog. Mm -hmm. You know, you just don't particularly like that dog. You know, I care deeply about all my dogs, but I don't like all the dogs, you know, personally. You know, Mm -hmm. I want to do a good job with them. Sometimes we don't, and that dog will come from another rescue organization, and it's like, wow. You know, you just look at the dog's face. Hey, they get me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a pit bull, and I'm I'm crazy, you know, and they (laughs) just, they are so happy, but... The joy that I get sometimes, I sit on a, you know, we're at a wood shop, so there's piles of wood everywhere. I'll sit on top of a big pile of wood, and I'll have 10 dogs out, and they're running and biting each other and doing all kinds of stuff, and I just think this is such a gift, Uh you know, that I was given to be able to do this and to give to these dogs, you know, and then somebody's going to adopt them and enjoy them and they move on or whatever, Uh but, you know, what I get out of this as a person, I mean, it's just, it's just, it brings me so much joy. So, I mean, thank I don't know how to thank you, but thank you. I mean, I just, well, I want to thank back. Me. And I mean, that's yeah. why I'm speaking on the show, because I'm very passionate about it. And, um, you know, I want to share this. Because yeah. if I can do it, somebody that's dyslexic mm-hmm. uh, cannot really hold a leash that well. I am no uh, trainer or anything. I'm really kind of 
clumsy, you know, when it <laughs> comes to trying to figure out how to work with dogs on leash, but off leash. I mean, you've given me that. I just feel like I'm flying, you know, when I'm with those dogs. Well, that's great, man. I mean, you know, you've come a long way. And I've always mentioned to you, which really is important, is that, you know, over the years in this business of working with dogs, especially aggression, uh, when you first start out, you know, you have a lot of things that happen. You make a lot of mistakes, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, over the years, of course, I've made those mistakes, but I've actually learn from those mistakes. Mm -hmm. And I always say to people that, look, the mistakes have already been made. If you're having a difficult problem, give me a call. Mm -hmm. Let's talk mm -hmm. about this. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not plugged into this, if you're not constantly mm -hmm. talking about it to mm -hmm. someone who understands what you're going through, it's easy for you to slip. Mm -hmm. Because... This is a relationship, this is an emotional relationship, and you do feel different things at different times for different reasons, and the dogs are going through that same thing. So there's a different language that I'm going to speak to you that's mm -hmm. going to keep mm -hmm. you sharp, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and that's what you've been putting into practice. And, and there's sometimes that, you, you know, you've come back and say, you know what, I haven't been talking to you, and, you know, this mm -hmm. happened, or that happened. Mm -hmm. And then the moment mm -hmm. that we no, talk, it's, yeah, remember? It's, it's definitely happened. It's it's like a lot of things that you have talked to me about. It's like when you go see a movie or read a book, mm -hmm. you enjoy it. Okay, it's nothing earth shattering. You get it, whatever. Right. But then for <laughs> some reason, you pick it up again, and you're like at a different point in your life, and you say, "Wow, I mean that was awesome." Okay, right. and now I get this, and that's how I look at certain dogs that have come into my life for whatever reason, and Clancy. You know, my dog, a lot of people that might be listening now know very well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he was a fighting dog, meaning he was grand champion, probably killed dogs, did everything bad. Mm -hmm. I did not want to take this dog. And basically the deal that I made was to bring him to you for an assessment, thumbs up or thumbs down. I was going to take him. You know, were you going to say yes or no? And you told me this is a dog that, you can work with. This is a good dog. And he so had a, because he had a, you told me that, yeah. I took him. Mm -hmm. And and look at what he has done for other dogs and what he's done. You know, I, I take very little credit for how good he is. I take <laughs> very little credit because this was a great dog that's taught me so much yeah. about how good a dog can be if you allow him to become the dog that he already is. And that's the door that you open to me is, is to understand that I'm not really changing the dog. All I'm doing is looking inside that dog to figure out if it's social mm -hmm. and it's learned, how do we bring out the dog he should be genetically? Wow. And that's what you identify for me and helped me so much and did this for Clancy and understand he's got quirks, you know, just like all of us, mm -hmm. but He's a therapy dog. He's a canine good citizenship dog. Mm -hmm. He's a dog for a long time that I used as my, like, stable dog where I could take him places right. and, and use him to look at other dogs that maybe I was going to adopt or help somebody with and really get a reading on that other dog because I knew my dog so well. You know, mm -hmm. now he's 15 years old. He's kind of slowing down and everything. But some of the dogs, like like Trixie that you've recently evaluated. Yeah, tell us about Trixie. Rest yeah, tell us the story about yeah. Trixie. Yeah, well, Trixie, Trixie's such a great story because she was rescued by a hoarder mm -hmm. and ended up in an animal cruelty case and was on the news, on CBS News and everything, and, you know, our group helped convict this lady, and, and actually she pleaded guilty, mm -hmm. and then ended up in the shelter, and they were going to kill Trixie because nobody wanted her. I passed on her, a couple other rescues passed on her, another lady took her, and she lost her house in foreclosure, and... So now Trixie's floating around again, right? And, you know, I just looked at her and I thought, I just can't fail this dog. But, you know, she, every single person who had her, she'd been rescued and dumped and rescued, and you know, three times. Did, she, did the police pick aggressive. her up or something? The police have her at one point? The police, yes. Okay. Yes, police had her. She was, you know, in custody holding everything, and every single person said the same thing. She's great with people but she's very dog aggressive. This is a dog who will never be able to be with another dog. Never. Mm -hmm. She's a fence fighter, you know, everything about this dog, you know, and she's going to be set in her ways because she's older and she's stubborn. Right. 
So I'm like, wow, okay, well, you know, I just thought a year from now when I look back and I think about her being put down, am I going to be okay with myself? Mm -hmm. Am I going to always think about this dog? And the answer was yes. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, I'm going to work with, it was a police officer. We'll work together on this. We're going to take her to Brandon. If Brandon tells us the dog is dangerous, meaning that dog aggressive, I'm not going to move forward with her and we'll probably put her down because I won't be able to do a good job. And that would be such a major thing. You know, it was like really upsetting to me that I thought at least she gets a chance this way and she's not going to die in the shelter. So right. you assessed her and you had her for, I think she was boarding with you for like three months, mm -hmm. mostly because I didn't have space. And right. actually, you know, I was, still reluctant, even though I could see the video and you'd say, Lori, this dog is fine. What everybody had told me was right. in my brain so strong. Yeah. Isn't that amazing that what you can hear, what yeah. you can hear, not experience, but what you hear, yeah. that is, yeah. and we're not talking, you know, it's difficult sometimes to hear truth and accept it like we can hear this, yeah. you know, yeah. and I didn't know this story, you know, yeah. you just brought me this dog and you said, hey. You know, mm -hmm. we need to mm -hmm. know, I mean, if I'm going to keep this dog or not. And so yeah. I totally relied. And that, that, was, yeah, I that was it. And then, you know, she came to me about, I don't know, maybe it's been six months. Yeah. And right away, you know, I'm thinking, well, if that was Brandon's, I mean, this is my thought process that I will share with everybody now because everything's cool. But at the time <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, you know, this is, this is not like six years ago. We're talking six months. So you can see, you know, I'm, I'm just like anybody that's listening. I am. N nothing special here, you know? Uh -huh. So, you know, I've got her and I'm thinking, oh man, she has showed the teeth at a dog. You know, I'm like, what's up? You know, it's <laughs> like, I thought she was good, you know? And now she's just standing there, you know, and she's big, you know, she's big and thick and she's a big girl. So I'm thinking, I'm all alone here. I'm, I don't know. I'm not putting her with Simon. I'm not putting her with, I don't know. I don't know who I'm going to put her with, you know? And then I thought, you know what? There is no shame in putting a muzzle on this dog. You put a basket <laughs> muzzle on her, and, you know, she's walking around with this basket muzzle. Wait, 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 here. hold on, hold on, Lauren. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold yeah. on. Yeah. You mean to tell me, after uh -huh. you talked to Leroy, yeah. who was yeah, my yeah, guy, yeah. my man Leroy, at yeah. the kennel, yeah. and he told you that she was a go. Yeah. And I yeah. told you she was a go. <laughs> you were still having Okay, sleep. wait a minute. Oh, you know, we forgot. Okay, this is the other thing that was in my head. She got adopted. Remember, she got adopted. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we forgot about that part. That's, right. That's what was yeah. in my head. She got adopted, and the lady who adopted her didn't want to listen to you, mm -hmm. okay, because yeah. that's the process we have when a dog gets adopted. They're going to call you, you know, speak to me, but they'll deal with you with, with solving the issue together. Right. So she's not wanting to listen because she wants to do love and affection. And uh, Trixie, I, now I know Trixie, she couldn't understand that. Now it's so simple to me, but at the time I just, I didn't know the dog and I'm thinking, wow, she wouldn't even let the trainer inside the house. She tried to bite him. Uh -huh. She went after the trainer. So a man could never get inside, you uh -huh. know, or he got near her, but he could never touch her or some crazy thing. So all that's going around in my head <laughs> when I'm working with her, because I'm thinking, is she going to bite me? Right. You know, right. so I'm putting a muzzle on her. Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> After everything, Leroy, everybody, you know, the answer is yes. So I had that basket muzzle, and Daniel kept saying, you know, my helper and Sarah, who helps me at the kennel, like, when are you going to take that off? You know, I take it off, obviously, to put her away and stuff. But when she was out with the dogs, I said, you know what? That muzzle's for me. Right. Okay. I know. I know, like, uh, you know, on paper, mm -hmm. she's cool. Right. But this is about me. Right. And I know, and I've learned this the hard way. I do things a certain way, and it works out better. Okay. And then one day I just said, you know what? That damn muzzle's coming off. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, that's it. And then it's just let the games begin. And because she and I took a lot of time to get to know each other slowly, and we built a foundation, and again, it's really more about me than her, she and I are tight now. I mean, this dog is one of the dogs that I use really to check other dogs out, mm -hmm. you know, so she's taken some of the work Clancy used to do and she does crazy stuff. I mean, she's a great worker. Now she's a dog that actually I would consider keeping, Right. you know, and if somebody wanted to adopt her, that's wonderful. But if, if nobody comes along that would, you know, do a good job with her, she can stay as long as she wants because yeah. she's a great worker for me. 
does a fabulous job and she's very happy and she understands and, and, and we have a great relationship. But again, this dog would not be walking this earth if it wasn't for you because there's really nobody else that's going to look at this dog. Yeah, I mean, we can talk about that. I mean, I, um, you know, of course, my experience with uh, a dog with aggression and being mauled. But, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, we, this year, 2012, I mean, the way that we look at dogs uh, in the past and the way that we're looking at dogs today as a society, it has to change. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, we have to back up, turn around, and look at this thing from a different perspective. We need to have things explained to us properly. What is this thing, aggression? You know, it, it, it's not the boogeyman. When you break it down and you understand it and you're given this information a couple of different ways, just like what you said, you take it, you mm-hmm. digest it, mm-hmm. you do the things I talk about. I, I talk about using muzzles all the time with mm-hmm. people because mm-hmm. the muzzle is for you. This is about making you feel comfortable, you know, because believe me, I know what it is to feel uncomfortable. I've been in Mm -hmm. just about Mm -hmm. every kind of fight you can imagine over the years, Mm -hmm. rolling Mm -hmm. down the hills and dog Mm -hmm. pack fights and things. You know what I'm talking Mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. I do know. So, um, you know, but I've been able to be blessed enough to see it from the inside out to understand that aggression is the highest form of communication. You've heard me say that many, many times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, And mm -hmm, it's a dog that's acting out of stress, frustration Mm -hmm. that generally we put on them because we don't know how to produce an environment that can create the reality that we want. Mm -hmm. We can make that happen. You have created Mm -hmm. a controlled environment there at your place You know Mm -hmm. how to introduce dogs. You have your dogs that work for you, just like I have dogs that work Mm -hmm. for me. And it makes me so happy because you're the first uh, of the rescuers that have really jumped into the deep end of this. And I'm sitting back looking at you from a different perspective, and Mm -hmm. I'm seeing that you are doing the things that I am asking and telling you you should be doing and you are getting that kind of emotional results that Mm -hmm. I want to hear about you know Mm -hmm. sure you're going to have problems yes you still have some situations that go down but for the most part if you were to turn around and look at where you came from and where you Mm -hmm. are today if someone had told you you're going to be putting a pack of dogs together that were you know fighters you'd say Mm -hmm. no way the fights that I've had you know, mm-hmm. and so for me, this is, <laughs> I wouldn't have done it honestly. Right. I mean, 16 years ago, I didn't know what a pit bull was. <laughs> you know, so I am not like, you know, the pit bull queen. You know, maybe I, I sometimes I, people will say, oh, that you know, she knows everything. I know nothing. Okay, <laughs> I really know nothing. I, what I know is I have good common sense. You know, I really am not an expert on anything. I know how to make furniture. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, you said that to me before, you know, and look, I, you know, and I know, you know, guys, you know, guys yeah. that work with dogs yeah. that are not yes, going do. to do this. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Every, every, you want to see their minds blown, come have them stand at my <laughs> gate. Oh my God. They're just like, damn, you know, look at those dogs. Right. Oh my God. You know, it's just, they're amazing. Yeah. You know, and it's just, I'm looking at them like we do this every day. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, you know more than you think you know, you know, and, uh, yeah. you know, this is the same thing. I always say this to, to people who I've been blessed to, to work with and be around and, you know, Leroy, especially, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, this gentleman, I haven't had a chance to talk about him, but we will. Um, is fantastic, and you know that. And yes, he is. knows more than he thinks he knows, too. And, mm-hmm. and we're going to mm-hmm. bring him in because he is my dog park guy. I mean, I don't even go to the dog mm-hmm. park anymore. He does it. He mm-hmm. knows the mm-hmm. deal, you know. And mm-hmm. he's just like you in that he does it, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm so happy for you, you know, because you're a rescue, you know. And this is where I'm shooting from. I'm, I want 
different rescue, and there are other rescues that I deal with that I, you know I love. They're, they believe mm-hmm. in this, but you are actively interacting with me pretty much on a daily basis because of the dogs mm-hmm. that are coming in and out. And mm-hmm. this is something that we want to spread out to the shelters too. I mean, mm-hmm. my arms yeah. are open. I I would hope that their arms are open for me to uh, to give them my input and to help them with evaluating dogs and putting dogs together because basically just like you when people are coming to adopt dogs they generally want a dog that can be placed with another dog of course I mean, we know that but my yeah. whole philosophy here is that if we can't educate the consumer these people that are going to get the dogs to teach them this information then the other stuff that we're trying to do is not going to work because if mm-hmm. everyone's still trying to sit, stay, come, heal, and give treats Mm -hmm. to control Mm -hmm. emotional behaviors physically, Mm -hmm. then the cycle is going to complete itself. It's going to continue to go around and around, and we're going to be in a a bad position here. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. people like you and people you know and friends of mine and and friends of the shelters, and and we have to get together and and talk about this. And that's the purpose of the Mm -hmm. seminar, too to talk about yeah. ideas mm-hmm. and how to change this thing, you know, how to make a mm-hmm. difference. If we're going to achieve no kill, it's not just uh, spaying and neutering dogs and mm-hmm. getting them chipped. We've mm-hmm. got to understand the way they think, and we have to teach people how to connect with their dogs mentally and emotionally the way pack leaders actually do. Mm-hmm. You know, otherwise we're in trouble, man. And you've worked too hard, and other rescuers Mm -hmm. have worked too hard Mm -hmm. for us not to get on board with something that's new and something that's different. I mean, I'm, as far as I know, you know, at first I didn't want to. People said, I don't know, Brandy, maybe you shouldn't say that, you know, you are... you don't train and that you don't think it's necessary. But you know, when I get dogs in that have been aggressive and I put them with other dogs and we live harmoniously together without the tricks, then I just got to stand up and say it and then take this information and whoever wants it to grab it and be a part of this and be a part of this team, uh, yeah. I think it's here for us. And I, I want to thank you as the reason I'm saying this because you are – doing it okay. well thank you i mean thank you for giving it to me but you know like you said we it's really important we've got to create more people that think this way because i need to adopt more dogs i've got dogs sitting at my kennel that are beyond ready to be adopted but there is not a person that's going to carry forward with the work we'll get are people that want to do a lot of love and affection and training and they're nice people but it's just not going to work for for a lot of my dogs, and they're going to get returned. It's just inevitable. Well, we don't. So want, we don't they're going to fail. Right. We don't want that to happen. And like again, no, we don't. It's, it's a pointless right. situation, you know. So yeah. And actually, you know, and the, of course, that's the purpose of this show too, to try to reach more people to tune in so that they can, uh, yeah. you know, get on this wave of thinking. Mm-hmm. This is mm-hmm. new, you know. Mm-hmm. We, mm-hmm. No one has ever talked like this before. And so, of mm-hmm. course, it's an uphill battle, but, you know, mm-hmm. I'm willing to take that, that climb. You're willing to take that climb, and there are many other Absolutely. people who are willing, but we need more people to take that climb, you know. Yeah. And yeah. I want because to thank could, you, too. We could definitely for, be over at the shelter taking more dogs if we could find more people to be ready to adopt them. Not just people. There's people, but we have to get the people educated like you're right. talking about. So. Please, if you're listening, buy a ticket. Buy a ticket for October 4th, please. That's you know, right. It's going to be a great seminar. October 4th yeah. at 7 to 9 p.m. at Los Angeles right. Trade Tech College. Yes. Thank you, Lori, for everything Thank that you, you do for Downtown Dog Rescue and the homeless people and uh, things that you have done in terms of keeping the Fouché way alive. I want to thank you, and we will see you and talk with you again next Thursday at 1 o'clock p.m. on the Fouché Way radio show. You're listening to Fouché Way with Brandon Fouché right here on L.A. Talk Radio.